actor Peter Davison and actress Sandra Dickinson. They are married, as it happens. How long has your fling been now? Oh, uh, four and a half years. I think. Four and a half years. <laughs> I remember. Anyway, Peter here has said that he is uh, going to be leaving uh, Doctor Who and his time travels for less far-flung challenges, and precisely what they are, we'll find out very shortly. And Sandra will be taking an early look at the morning papers. And don't forget that it's when... We're very pleased to have our guests in the studio this morning. They are Peter Davison and his wife Sandra Dickinson, both of whom are noted for their comedy performances in particular, although uh, Peter has been uh, recently, uh, more recently seen as that intrepid time traveller, Doctor Who. However, he recently announced that he would be giving up that role when he has finished recording the current series, much to the disappointment of the fans he has gathered since he took over the part from Tom Baker way back in uh, January 1982. He didn't get a lot of dialogue there, did you? No, no, you couldn't stop him, really, once he got going. The funny thing is, looking at both those clips we've shown, one could be the other and the other could be the other, couldn't it? Yes, it's a bit science fiction orientated. Yes. You know, yeah. Why have you given it up, Doctor Who? Well, it has been, at least it will be by the time I leave, three years. And the um, thing is, I think that because Tom did it for seven years, it does seem a little short. But in fact, I think that three years is a fair time on anything. Mm. You know, I think the first two Doctors did three years each. I myself have done three years of most series that I've done. I just feel that I want to do something else now. Have mm. you had anything to say in the matter? Well, I would never admit to that, but, um... Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, yes. Yes, she made me, really. No, I just think it was a, it was a, a thing that I, we, we both felt that I should just move on now. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's great fun to do, Doctor Who, but it's a bit limiting, a bit sort of frustrating, if I'm honest about it. Yes. Uh, to do that sort of thing. Yeah. It's really about, Doctor Who's about an adventure. Yeah. And uh, uh, you have to come up with the most amazing uh, uh, dialogue and words. The speeches I have to learn are all about, it's scientific mumbo jumbo, really. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's the art is to get it out looking as if you know what you're talking about. And of course, you never do. Are you satisfied with the way you've played it, Peter? You weren't as quite as eccentric, <coughs> if I may say so, as some of the previous uh, no. uh, owners of the, the TARDIS. No, that's right, I wasn't. And I think that... Uh, you know, you have to find your own way to do it. I personally am quite happy with the way I've done it, uh, considering that I've done it, if you know what I mean. I still don't know that I don't prefer Patrick Troughton as my favourite doctor, even including me, but... But you did uh, it the way you decided and wanted to do it. That's yeah. right, yes. I mean, I wouldn't have left if I felt that I hadn't um, done it to the best of my ability. Uh, um, I'd have carried on until I was, uh, I don't know... You can make a life, you can make a career out of it. Could go on well, I was going to ask you about that, because it's all about giving it up, Sandra, but... Uh, You've just finished working, have you not? You've, you've, yes. been, you've been doing a film yeah. recently. But you've no work at the moment, have you, to speak of? No, well, <clears throat> I think part of the reason you go into acting is because you have a sort of professionally suicidal streak. Yeah. And um, I, think, I think, in a way, you, you can get too comfortable and too cosy, and that's not good for you artistically, in a way, I think. I mean, that sounds a bit highfalutin, and you have to eat. Yeah, you have to pay the rent, don't but you? Yes, do you, you have do. anything to do now? I mean, OK, so you're working, what, until the end of this year, in mm. a sense? Yes. You just hope that somebody will come along and say, how about 1984? Absolutely, yes, that's it. You see, the thing is, when, you, when, when you're an actor, you sort of get twitchy if you know you are working. I mean, I used to get quite twitchy knowing that I was doing Doctor Who for another two years. And uh, you rehearse an actor, and you see all these other productions coming and going, and you just think, oh, I just wish I could be... Yeah, yeah you, get, you get what they call availability checks for other things, and if you're busy, you see these things come in and think, oh, if only I were free to do that. Yes. So yeah. if you do book yourself up, like Peter has for nine months of the year, you only have three months to do other things. But you could go on doing that forever, couldn't you? You really? could, yes. Whenever and I think you're that... at work, you wish you weren't, so you could pick up another part. I and mean, that's a crazy way of looking. Oh, absolutely, it is crazy, but it, that's, the way it, that's the way it does work, unfortunately. Um, obviously, the easiest thing would be just to carry on until you were old and very eccentric. And <laughs> <laughs> but I think you have to be... I mean, we have no children at the moment. We have no one else to feed but ourselves and a few animals. Yeah. Yes, and, that, and I think you have to... Take the risks. Oh, my heart, I've got the <laughs> tears of streaming all around the studio. Well, I'm afraid that, that being guests on Breakfast Time doesn't pay an awful lot, no. but I hope perhaps it'll keep it'll you help. It'll help. a crust or two. <laughs> and we're going to ask you to, each of you to do the papers today. Uh, you're doing them first, aren't yes. you? And, and mm. Peter at uh, half past eight or so. And we hope you'll enjoy your stay with us this morning. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed. Still with me. He's playing solo at the moment because his wife, Sandra Dickinson, has gone to read the papers for us and she'll be re reappearing a little later on. Uh, you have been telling us, because people are joining us all the time as uh, the morning wears on, about the fact that you're leaving Doctor Who. But you have made, much to my delight, and I'm sure a lot of people's delight, a very Christmas special of all creatures great and small. Is that right? That's right, yes. We made it... Uh 
Unfortunately, during the month of May, which wasn't the best weather-wise, but we were, uh, uh, did it on a film up in Yorkshire. It's not uh, specifically about Christmas, it's just uh, to go out at Christmas, yeah. hopefully Christmas Day. And it's set after the war, that is, about four or five years after the last episode was set. I see. And all the old team are together, Robert That's Harden. right, yes, with the uh, a sad exception of uh, Mary Hignett, who, of course, who played the housekeeper who yes. died yes. Um, about three years ago. But uh, for the rest of us, it was as, as if uh, we hadn't been apart, really. It was wonderful, the cast sort of instantly. Yes came together, because we've all gone our various different ways since we left. Tristan has been very good <coughs> to you, hasn't he, really, as a, as, a, as a character? Yes. Tristan really was uh, my big break, I think. And it, I, think, I think, personally, it's, a, it's the character that will stay with me, rather than Doctor Who. You know, people, we talk about uh, typecasting and things sticking with us, uh, and people have asked me in the past few days about Doctor Who, whether I think that will prevent me being cast, or people will remember me as being Doctor Who. Mm. And I think tr tr it's really Tristan is the one that I think will stay with me for the rest yeah. of my career. Tell me, did you go and see James Herriot when you were up there, the man who wrote these lovely stories? Because I gather that you have had dinner with him, the cast, mm, and you've right. met him and so on. Do you, do you all know him very well? Well, uh, I wouldn't say very well, but he did uh, uh, ask, invite us to dinner, and we went over there, and we've seen him three or four times. Uh, and he's, he, he's, a, he's a lovely man. He really he just wants to get on being mm. a vet. That's his prime direct, uh, directive in life. It's because not... Harriet isn't his real name, is it? No, 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 no. I think, really, he didn't use his real name because of that very reason, that he yeah. wasn't really interested in uh, becoming a personality. He really wanted to uh, carry on being a vet and write the books almost as a, as a, as a sideline, really. He, he once told me that he, wa he writes the books watching the television yeah. and, and he's, various programmes. He's got a wonderful photographic book of the North Yorkshire. Oh, yes. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Anyway, uh, we'll talk a bit more perhaps later. Can I offer you yes. half an egg? Let's uh, drag Peter Davison into this. Fine. It, it's an invention by uh, a lady called Mary Young in the summer, she's a poultry farmer, not surprisingly. I wonder if you uh, crossed a chicken with a pig or something. <laughs> Blue bacon fumes over the chickens mm. as they're sitting on their nests, I think. Mm. Well, the other wonderful thing about mm, eating hard-boiled eggs of whatever flavour, you can't actually say anything when you've taken mm. a mouthful, can you? Mm -hmm. mm. But you're not pulling a face, so that's how, that looks good mm. to no. begin with. Do you know how many eggs we ate last year? No. 12,900 million. How about that? Incredible. I'm impressed uh, with your knowledge. I think I will continue to keep my bacon and my eggs separate. Mm. Preferably. Does it taste like bacon inside the yolk, though? Mostly egg, really. Mm. But you can the sort of bacon... Smoky. Mm. Smoky, bacon. smoky. Yeah. Like smoky you, crisps. You that don't, sort of principle. You don't know how um, it happened. You don't know how Mary, whatever her name was, from Somerset, managed to get the bacon flavour She gets the this... Um, syringe and she picks up the egg and she syringes it believe. to each egg. I don't <laughs> believe that. Let's have some weapons. We're in desperate need of your professional <laughs> advice because uh, Peter <laughs> Davison here and he's now been joined by his wife Sandra Dickinson. <clears throat> um, apart from his successes in All Creatures and Doctor Who, you're anxious and are trying to start a band, aren't you? What, what, tell us a little bit about the background to this venture. Well, I've been uh, writing songs really for about the past 15 years. I've uh, had a couple of things done, a couple of uh, television theme tunes for series and also a couple of songs which Sandra released in the 70s and I just felt that I, I had to do it before I got too ridiculously old mm. and I've never done anything really like that but uh, uh, the friends that I, ha that I have uh, are professional musicians and they've all been in many varied bands and they're excellent and so we're going to concentrate on that now. What sort of music is it? Well how do you, how do you define music? I don't know. Good. I mean, what can I say? It's not sort of pop music, it, but it's... I want to do it properly, this is what I feel, that it's not... Because I'm Doctor Who or recognisable, I don't think it's a shortcut. And I just want to do it properly, so we're getting together and we're rehearsing, and we haven't got a, a recording contract or anything. And it's not going to be Peter Davison and the whatever, it's yeah. going to be just a, a group name. Yes. And we just, it's just something I want to try. Um, there are millions trying to do it, aren't there? Now, yes. you know, he's reduced himself and taken himself out of Doctor Who and Tristan and all that. I mean, has he got a chance in...? Well, no, he's got lucky. The lucky thing is that you see that you're already known. Mm. So you've, got, you've obviously got a lead start on a lot of other bands if you do do it. Mm. But I would suggest that you take an old song and rework it, because that, that is the, the current thing. If you can do a, take, a, take a 60s song, a Motown song or something, and yes. rework it into a hit, um, I'm trying to think of a title that would suit you. I don't think there are any, many about Doctor Who, actually, or even uh, Who's Telling You Now. <laughs> <laughs> but at the moment, we're still, we're still concentrating on thinking of a name for the group. We can't... Well, you missed out on Meatloaf. Yeah, we yeah. Thought of Bre I thought of Brezhnev's hat. I was like, How about sliced bread? Sliced bread. Sliced bread, yeah, you know, just something like that. Or 
Yeah, we, we, we thought of a hat band as well. Hat band, yeah. yeah. Are well, you involved in this fetish fetish or something? Well, I've been, I, I just recorded some singles years ago and was recently asked to record another one. And then the guy said they could do me a better offer and all that. So at the moment, it's sort of up in the air. But um, mm. I, we, I've been recording some of the, you know, doing some of the singing. Well, I'm, I'm anxious a bit. Uh, but this, this is, Peter will be on his own in mm. that particular thing. Not quite certain what sort of music we're talking about. You yeah, say it's not it's quite it. pop. Well, it is, it is, I suppose. But what I mean to say, well, it's, it's not uh, what used to be known as middle of the road pop, if you like. It's, uh, uh, We've got I a guess sort, sort of, of thing selection that's, of... The sort of thing that's in the, in the top 20 now. Yeah. The thing is, when you're in my position, I mean, I've been asked a lot of times to do fairly dreadful songs, you know, just people have come along. So Gimmicky things. things. That's right, yeah. yes. And I don't think that's the way to do it if you ever want to do it seriously. And um, I just figured it was time was getting on, so... But how to define music, it's very difficult. You know, you can't say it's, oh, it's not, it's not heavy rock, it's not rock, really. I mean, it's, it, this mm. is awfully difficult to tell but someone. But contacts else. help, don't they, I'm afraid? Contacts do help. Oh, yeah. And you've got better looks than Barry Manilow, so... <laughs> hey, hey, there. Watch out, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you very much. We'll talk Peter Davison, what have you uh, dug out for us? Well, the first uh, thing I have for you here is quite interesting. I think you might find this quite interesting. It's about a tenant's TV station. 900 council tenants are planning to broadcast their own TV programmes. Opposition, eh? That's right, yes. I just want to tell you I'm available. Um, and the, uh, they also plan to take over the, the milk deliveries and the bread deliveries. Is this legal? I don't know. It sounds a good idea, though. I think it's totally got next to it, actually. Also, I just happened to notice this interesting thing about rabbits, apparently, are trying to chew the grass and build warrens on a new sports field. Unfortunately, the uh, sports field is made of plastic. I see. But they don't think, actually, it'll do the rabbits much harm. So it's nice. They'll probably even go to love it. <laughs> On to uh, something a bit more glamorous here. The top ten, the world's most uh, lovely women. What paper is that in? Oh, this is in the Mirror. Yeah. Uh, Everybody's idea of the world's most beautiful women, they're all different, aren't they? That's right. This is the, it worries me slightly. This is why I sort of uh, chose this one. It worries me slightly the American idea of what's uh, truly beautiful. It seems to me is uh, awfully... Your American wife is listening with no, some No, no, well, I mean, she had I mean, I, I think if she went over there, she'd probably be there. <laughs> right, um, but the thing, the thing is, really, it's just the image they have, I think. It is a bit too plasticky and perfect, I think. It's not really... It shows by Harper's Bazaar, I think. You must name them, because people may not right, have yes, other papers. Uh, Come on, who's there's the... There's uh, Jacqueline Smith, Joan Collins, Twiggy, Jane Seymour, Rachel Ward. A couple I don't actually know, I can't recognise. Oh, uh, Harry Belafonte's daughter. Ah. is among them. But, I mean, some of them are undoubtedly very beautiful. On Victoria Principle, I it's can't the top, top It's the top, say. yes. Who decides these things? Well, quite, this is it. I just think it's uh, just slightly worrying to decide who's the world's most beautiful women. Uh, Selena. I threatened to bring up exactly the same things, but I bring it up for a no, don't worry, I bring it up for a different reason. Yeah. That is that, as she said earlier, it is a load of rubbish. Mm. And I think it highlights a problem, which I found last week, uh, that sometimes the newspapers do write load of nonsense. I'm sorry, I was saving her blushes. We weren't involved in this, but no. you must just pick out the bones e of what is... Well, it is that right. um, uh, the uh, Daily... What is it? Ah, it's the Daily Mirror thinks that uh, Selena's in love. <laughs> yeah. After, uh, after, after a holiday, holiday in, Spain. in Spain, which she never went on. Yeah. Um, I mean, I myself last week had caused to be slightly put, put out by the press. I had a press conference because I was leaving Doctor Who, at which it was patiently explained uh, why I was leaving and that, in fact, the viewing figures had gone up since I took over, and a certain Myra Petty in the, in the Daily Mail uh, chose to write this extraordinary article based on nothing at all. Mm. I just think it's, it, it's, it is distressing to us, you know, that if you explain facts to them, that they can't actually base their yeah. stories on the facts. That's, that's really I think if you put your, your, your face on the box, you are, in fact, oh, uh, absolutely. liable to have it chopped absolutely. off. I, mean, they can... I just do wish that it would be accurate. <laughs> yes, um, that's it. That's it, really. Are you, are you prepared to give us a, an exclusive comment on No, this you said you were going to involve me. I'm in the news business. I'm in the news business. You know how inaccessible you are to news We thought we might have an exclusive comment, but we won't bother you about <laughs> that. Let's, uh, let's Peter go on. Right. A uh, slightly heavier piece here. This is... A nerve gas agreement that's been worked out, um, uh, President Reagan has been working with Congress to work out the, the details of the US starting production of nerve gas, which I think is extremely worrying. I think that the whole attitude of the West now, is, I, I feel, is becoming very worrying. It's all based on paranoia. You know, we're paranoid about what the Russians are doing, they're paranoid about what we're doing. And I just feel a little that the West we in the West, I mean, we have democracy on our side and uh, freedom on our side, but 
we're starting to be the bad guys a bit, I feel. Mm. This, I think we're just pushing too hard. That's meant to be the new politics, you know, you must be hard and forceful. But I think we're in danger of becoming slightly... You think uh, you're a bit worried about our type of behaviour in the matter now? That really, yes. I mean, obviously, we, are, we in the West, when we, we do have a inbred belief that we are we are right obviously mm. but i do think we have to try and rationalize it and look at ourselves step step back from ourselves and just see exactly what we're doing yeah can just before we finish yes. uh, you know we were talking about your band uh, uh, yes. you've got to have a band now because people are writing oh. in and and <laughs> suggesting ringing in rather and suggesting names for it uh, there's a lady here uh mrs jenny jessup from car in and sorry rang to propose a title which would keep alive his connection with a serious all creatures great and small. The band should be known as Stoyere, she says. As what? Stoyere. Oh, sorry. What, what, what Stoyere? What? Well, because, I says guess she's coming. An explanation. That, that is Harriet's written back. Ah. <laughs> but I don't think Stoyere does have a real start on the back. <laughs> I'll consider Thank that. Yeah, you'll consider that. <laughs>